Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back aboard the U-48. Uh, let's do away with the music part two. This one, make sure you've seen part one if you've not already. But for now, let's get underway. Of course, we were here in the battle in the Atlantic in the middle of a convoy attack. Quick look over on the map view. Bring everybody back up to speed on the current situation before we get underway. Our sub here right in the middle by its lonesome attacking the convoy that was trending down here from the south towards the north, making its way towards the UK. Uh, not too many miles away from the Spanish and Portuguese coastline. And we see here we've got some destroyers looking for us. Uh, it seems that they're focusing their interest over there. That is, of course, where we've begun our attack. We've since managed to sneak our way over here uh, with some ships directly ahead of us we're going to carry on and see what we can do now so without any further ado let's unpause and carry on on regular speed uh, we're moving ahead uh with regards to our sub at slow speed of course, that's not... and we're going to see if we can pick yeah. off any more of these guys here with as many officers as possible uh on station on duty now this is the next one Freighter, it's the Empire Tower because it's got this little pole on the back that makes it look like a tower. At least that's how I go by it. Velocity 12, we got that from previous, so we can remember that. And if we take a little look here on the zoom, he's actually slightly beyond the 90s. More like, ooh, coming to about there, 107. Okay, distance. To the highest mass there we go two kilometers and he's continuing to pull away um regardless let's go for 110 he will then zag back into us at some stage uh torpedoes not ready to fire i'm going to pick up to half speed and with the rudder come slightly port hopefully Hopefully he'll finish loading the tubes and he can start preparing them. The other option is, of course, uh, we swing around and get a rear-facing torpedo at this guy. But I think he's going to be too far away, unfortunately, by that time. Who won't be, though, is this guy. Tell you what. Rudders fully to port. And then we'll get a rear shot off. So this guy is the flat foot at the back. Similar to the Empire Tower, but without the big pole there. Recognize velocity. 12, we'd already agreed upon course. Well, slightly zagging into us. So slightly less than a 90. Let's go for 82. Distance. near the destroyers there the engines 2.6 and now with the rear tube they're ready to go let's increase the range slightly there if it misses after 2.8 kilometers it's going to double around and we're going to be ready for a shot here momentarily he's about to zag away from us he's still zagging towards us and he's going to zag away so i'm going to try and average it out about 75 degrees We'll add another 100. I'll tell you what, no. There we go. 2,800 yards. If it misses, the, the torpedo is going to double back round to the left. We're estimating the target is 2,600 yards. All right, with that, let's uh, unlock the target. Get rid of that. And I'm going to quick sweep of the scope. Check that we're not being jumped on by any destroyers. They're still a ways away. And that one, thankfully, looking in the wrong direction. There is another one over here, the flower class. We've got to be careful with these ones, these Corvette types. They're uh, problematic. And there's another Corvette over there. So there's, this convoy still has five destroyers capable of sinking us. Even though we took one of them out earlier on. Actually, quick look on map view. Going to continue making it this way. 
I think this guy here will be a suitable next target. In fact, we'll slow right down. Make sure that this guy here doesn't hear us. This torpedo so far looking good. We'll set up for here the Empire. What's this? Marlow. Der Torpedo ist auf halbem Weg zum Ziel. This one being the Empire Bell. Recognize velocity 12, course. Uh, zagging away slightly, but looks like generally about there. Distance. One point two. We're gonna have to pick up the pace a bit so we get the forward tubes in line. Forty seconds bis torpedo einschlag. We're gonna need even more power. Come on, let's get this turn done. Thirty seconds. Lower the tube. Quick glance at how our other torpedoes doing. 20 seconds. Treffer. Good shot. Feuer an deck. Good connection. Schwere Schäden am Rumpf. All right, with that, this guy apparently in a suitable position to fire, and he's still zagging towards us a little bit. So quick course. Zagging towards a bit more. There we go. Uh, velocity. We've got quick update on the distance. Moving shot 1.3 and with that is zagging in a little more. Let's average it about 63 and loss. Los! Slow back down, unlock, and once again, quick sweep. Destroyer's still a ways away. My main concern now is this guy. And there's been no ping. Sekunden bis Torpedo einschlag. No pinging at all. So I can only assume. 30 Sekunden. That they either haven't a clue where we are and they're pinging in completely the wrong direction. Or that we sunk the only guy capable of ping pinging, which I find very unusual, very strange. Ten Sekunden bis Einschlag. Schneller, schneller! Kurs auf diese Koordinaten setzen. Zu Befehl. Seems that that one torpedo was missed. Hopefully we can get one of ours ready and then aim on this guy again. Come on. Seem that you can't maintain torpedoes and reload them in the same torpedo room at the same time, which makes sense. New addition to the game. More realistic, for sure. I think this guy is going to be... Quick glance at the map. Oh my goodness, that torpedo there. 
doubled back, almost hitting us there. That was so close. And now we've got Destroyer making its way towards our position. Now, this torpedo going back in, there's a chance it may connect this particular time. I'm going to have to reduce speed to slow as this destroyer's moving in. And how's this torpedo doing this time? Well, it's looking awfully close. There she is. Surely this time. And that's got to be a good one. And there's a solid connect. Lovely shot. get rid of those periscope view unlock we've got one more boat over here the empire recognize velocity 12 course but she's currently zagging towards slightly less than the 90 let's give it there about 80 degrees distance because then we're, i think we're gonna have to dive away with this destroyer incoming distance that's about as close as we're going to get two kilometers and with that choke two is ready we'll go for a high speed yeah, shot and if it misses after 2.2 it can double back fantastic loss and with that let's get rid of the torpedo information let's get unlock the target lower the scope zoom out a tad quick sweep And this destroyer potentially turning towards if he doesn't see us and he passes behind our six is our torpedo at back ready to fire well this guy is starting to turn towards us i think it's time for a crash dive down we go Der Torpedo ist auf halbem Weg zum Ziel. And with 40 that. Sekunden bis Torpedo einschlag. Dive, dive, dive. And to ensure that we are rigged for all sure quiet, uh, we need our guys to stop reloading and maintaining the torpedoes. Tell you what, Weber, go on to damage control for now. And 20 Sekunden. close bulkheads. And we'll switch to silent running. Ten Sekunden bis Einschlag. And so this is as quiet as we can make it. Blue light in, gyro off, dive planes to manual. Treffer. Schwere Schäden am Rumpf. Distant explosion there. Another torpedo we fired must have connected. And so we've got Hoffman here on the dive plane. Menzel, with nothing to do right now, will uh, free up his crew. In fact, we can give Menzel command station and that will improve the ability of the everybody else aboard the boat just to work a little more efficiently captain's doing the same we've got knurd on the engines and web on damage control and that's in. Well, that destroyer is definitely making its way overhead. And this is what Schuster can hear according to his sonar contacts. This is the guy directly overhead of us. The H-94. See, you've got at least a lifeboat or so. I mean, that, you're that close, you can actually hear the waves hitting at the side of the lifeboat. And looks like the other destroyer is now starting to close in a little bit on our position. That's for sure. The remaining vessels on the convoy that we were able to sink, four of them continuing north. 
there's a much larger number of these guys right on top of us, it would seem. And this guy, uh, I don't think he heard us, is continuing his left turn. Alright, so threat to me, this guy here... The other destroyers are up front, and so what I'm going to try and do is double round to the left. We're at silent running. And I'm going to try and escape, first of all, a left turn, and then try and escape in this direction. So if we take a look at the position of the ships, there's this guy here that I'm definitely trying to avoid. There's certainly no point trying to ride along with the convoy, because that's where they're going to be trending anyway after they've conducted their search, and they still seem to be focused over in this region here as well. So I think at least now my plan of escape to the southwest, I'll bring you back in a bit. Two or three minutes later, and one of the destroyers, the one that was originally over us, went back to the top, but this guy has gotten lucky with his sonar and appears to be homing in on us. And... Potentially, we could be getting ready for some depth charges. He was originally over here before and all of a sudden started making his way in our direction and I could hear the ping in. And of course, the ping's not like this global. It can see everything. It needs to be pointed in the right direction. There's only so many pings that can be fired off in a minute and then it's got to move around. Kind of like the slices of a pizza. There's only, there's only so many slices... Uh, that the sonar can deal with at once. And it seems like there's a slight chance it's picked us up. Now we are deep. I'm going to try and go a little deeper. See if we can evade his sonar. Get underneath an inversion layer. Something like that. We're still on silent running. And unless we hear depth charges splashing into the water. It's going to remain so. If we hear those depth charges. We'll have to switch up to flank speed at that time. No further pings. Could just be that he's shutting up and trying to listen. And again, with everything set to silent, nobody doing any jobs that would make any noise. All the systems on the submarine off, aside from the electric motors on silent speed. And we're now at 170 meters, which is beyond the maximum safe depth. But if it's a choice between... Going slightly deeper than you should, or eating a depth charge. And as ever, the usual guys sweeping up. But you can hear it creaking. And quick look on map. I'll bring you back uh, as and when the situation evolves. Because for now, it's going to be a slow and laborious process of trying to creep away from this guy without him being able to hear us. Quick update then. A couple of minutes later, the guy has swung around. Uh, beyond our position. You see he's about a kilometre away, but what concerns me isn't so much that. Let's get away some of these other markings that are in the way. What concerns me more is the fact that two of his pals are racing down to join in on the search. And so with those little markers out the way, we'll keep the convoy trend line in. It's these two here that are rushing down to join in. So my overall plan is going to be to continue to try and sneak away from the convoy in this direction. Well, a good bit of news just a few minutes later. Those two ships decided to 180 and head back with the convoy. This ship about to pass over the top. It's going to be safest for me right now to come to a full stop. So we'll be completely silent. We'll be maintaining our depth, and then hopefully this guy isn't going to hear anything. 
He could be pinging away, he's just pinging in the wrong direction and not picking us up. At least that's what I'm hoping. And with that, uh, hopefully the case, after he completes his turn, hopefully he will trend north as well. 10 minutes later, we're still silent. Absolutely nothing running at all. The boat's still creaking and importantly, Schuster on the hydrophone has said the nearest guy is also starting to head north. He's now two and a half kilometers away from our position. So I think we can do away with some of these markings. And the first order of the day is going to be surfaced slightly. We're still going to stay deep, but we're going to get away from the red band a little bit. Hopefully uh, reduce the risk of any leaks developing aboard. And then a few more minutes with this guy avoiding our position entirely i think we'll come risk coming up to periscope depth well here we are and 20 minutes later and with all contacts fading fast captain's elected to surface to periscope depth and with that i think we can put the captain onto the periscope duty and we'll also cancel the alarm at this stage and what that will do is set crew to their default mode. It allows some, if they're tired, to go back to bed. And we'll see if we can pick up any survivors on this one. Actually, a lot of crew there tired, which is fine. Quick look then on the periscope. Klaus, the captain. Minimum zoom. And a quick sweep round. There is the convoy speeding off in the distance. Uh, continuing on their north northeasterly trend. And hopefully we'll have some survivors that we can pick up. And in fact there are some lifeboats on the 270 on the heading. And so let's begin making our ways over. Slow speed. And uh, we'll come out. We can open bulkheads now as well. And onto the map view. Let's make our way to... So I'll tell you what, there's another... Some lifeboats here uh, to the south. And then we'll make our ways over. Hopefully with some officers. I'll bring you back when we're a little closer. Well, there's a boat full of survivors. And what's that raising from down below? Oh. It's the U-boat. But well, that's got to be a little creepy out at sea when suddenly a shark of steel pops up right next to you. Of course, the Allies have been filled with the prop. The Allies have been filled with the propaganda that the Germans upon surface in the boat would shoot you. Was not the case, though. And many of the captains uh, even offering first aid check-in for any severely injured crew would offer them first aid, give them morphine. And this was a story that was shared by both sides during the after-action after after report. So both in the captain's logbook from the German side of you, as well as the survivors who were interviewed uh, after every single sinking. Uh, so the stories were corroborated in that regard. And... At least for today, we're just interested in nabbing any officers. Oh, alarm's been rung. No doubt having spotted the destroyers, but they are a ways in the distance, so I think we can stop worrying about that. Radioing off there the messages. We've got four queued messages, which includes the spotting of the convoy as well as the numerous kills, but for now, interactions nearby. Lifeboat 1. Who have we got? Just regular sailors. Sorry. Only officers. And just regular sailors there. So at least on this particular ship, it would seem that Captain and the Chief Engineer going down with his boat. And so with that, let's go full speed and make our way towards the second lot of survivors just two kilometers away. And I'll bring you back once we're over there. While we make our way over, I've once again cancelled the alarm. I've reduced the number of lookouts with Klaus on the bridge just so that they don't uh, decide 
to ring the alarm again. Of course, they're perfectly legitimate to do so with the destroyer sighted over there. I've also gone ahead and set everything for normal. So we put the gyro compass back on. I've got the electric compressor on and we'll turn the diesel engines on now as well. That's the electric compressor is going to put air back in the tank. So next time we need to blow the ballast or whatnot, we've got access to that. Lighting back to normal. And we've also gone ahead and turned the dive planes back to electric. Of course, opening the bulkheads before as well. And with that, yeah, we're back up for normal running top side. Of course, any evidence of rounds coming in long range artillery or anything like that will dive away. But at this point, the convoy is so far away. If the destroyers do peel off to deal with us, they'll be leaving a large number of ships very vulnerable. Any officers? Any officers, please? Lifeboat number one. And just regular seamen. Lifeboat two. And there we go, Captain, as well as the Chief Engineer, Rupert Chapman, Michael Ebling. Welcome aboard Dasport. And so that's two of them. And then last but not least, at least visible to us, is the lifeboat over here. In fact, we'll go flank speed on this one. Let's have a test on the engines. Besides, that'll help charge everything else up a bit. Batteries, although not too bad. Um, batteries, 93% of course having the upgrades there. And we were only sneaking around below the sea for a couple of hours or so on minimum speed. So the battery's holding up very well there. There we can see them charging up and fuel 84% left. Any officers here? Any officers? Let's have a little look. Lifeboat 1. Just regular sailors. And lifeboat two, captain and chief engineer, Malcolm Armstrong, Alan Downs, welcome aboard. Join the four of your other lot. And let's continue on mission. I think it's time to get on out of here. And with those survivors successfully picked up, the U-boat now trending away in a southwesterly direction, making its way pretty much 180 degrees away from the convoy as we continue to seek further targets, using about half of our torpedoes, maybe slightly more. Certainly got enough to have another pop at one more convoy or go after a straggler somewhere. And with that, it's sunset at the end of another very successful day hunting out on the East Atlantic, 22nd of April, 1941, sailing off into the sunset on a lovely calm sea. Shortly after sunset, uh, 8.30 or so on the 22nd of April, routine dive, Schuster picking up nothing on his hydrophone. Back on the top side, uh, a slightly more unpleasant weather than we dived to shortly after five past ten on the evening. And with the total amount that we were supposed to patrol in our sector nearing completion, Captain elects to swing the boat round and make its way back to the other side of the sector. We're currently, if we take a look on the map view on the southwestern side of the patrol sector. Coming over to the northeastern side, we're going to cover about another 900 kilometers getting there. Uh, so we will more than have exceeded our minimum patrol distance. And at that point, we'll make our ways back towards La Rochelle. Mission has been completed as we exceed the minimum amount of distance required and requiring a radio officer up topside to send that messenger off. So we'll get to Kurt Hoffman, uh, not on the hydrophone. That's not going to help. We need you on the radio, please. And with the officer there, we'll be able to radio that off. Patrol completed. Just had a radio message in. A single merchant spotted in Naval Square. Bravo Echo 957. Slow speed on a northeastern coast. Zigzagging. Um, three fan miss. One tube rudder. Uh, didn't pursue due to equipment issues. So sounds like one of our U-boats having difficulties going after this boat. Bravo Echo 957 trending northeast uh, slow. So we'll see if we can find that. So Bravo Echo 
947. So here's Bravo Echo 9392. And then jump into 97. So here's Bravo Echo 94. And then if we zoom in further, here we got it. Bravo Echo 941. Let's just get the ruler out so roughly in that area. Well, he's about 500 kilometers uh, behind us, which is a very uh, long way to double back. And, and then there's no guarantee that we're going to find him once we get there anyhow. Um, so let's continue home. April the 23rd, 1941. We're at full speed, not flank speed, but full speed. And the sun there making its way down towards the west as the end of yet another day approaches. Beginning to enter the waters of the Bay of Biscay. We'll bring you back. Hopefully in a day or so we'll make it home. Yeah, another radio message. Bravo Fox 456, a single merchant propeller, slow speed, uh, this time southwestern course. Uh, so that's interesting. So Bravo Fox 456. Let's take a little look then. Bravo Fox 445. And uh, here we go. 456 trending southwest. Um, so potentially in this direction. Now, this is more of a possibility. Yes, we've got a detour a little bit, but it's not like we're going to do a 180. And so if we just put a ruler out, roughly what distance we're talking about, just 200 or so kilometers away. That may even be a little less if this uh, merchant continues with his trend line. And so that is a lot better than trying to chase a boat that's 500 or more kilometers away. And so, Captain, discretion there. Uh, 24th of April, shortly after 8 in the morning, we're going to swing around to intercept. 90 minutes later, we've been heading this way and it's time for a dive down to periscope depth. We're going to see if we can just pick him up without having to dive further. What we will do is reduce engines to a full stop. Okay, so here we are, finally getting there. A hydrophone guy with a range approximately thus far. At least not yet picking him up. Let's dive down to around 40 and uh, see if that makes a difference. And it would seem, at least as of yet, we don't seem to have him. So we'll surface the boat and we'll go flank speed. Uh, we'll make it, uh, let's have a little look, to around here. And then once we reach that point, we'll go for another dive. And then if at that point we can't hear him, I think it's time to head back regardless. And so another hour, an hour and a half or so having passed, and we're approaching this line where we were going to go for our next routine dive. And so let's go for that. And down we go. And what do you know? Propellers weighs on top of us. Uh, we've actually got an alarm here. We've dived down right next to a boat that we didn't see topside and the crew having rung the alarm, this guy just seven and a half kilometers away. So it would seem that the crew that were on top of the ship before we dived down, the, the, the crew that were on the watch, were potentially falling asleep. We've also got a solitary propeller over here as well. But for now, uh, this is going to be our first target of the day. A single merchant ship. Uh, so we'll come up to periscope depth just to make sure that they're not armed. And then we'll take a look at potentially a uh, board and search. Well, here we are within range in theory. And he was approaching us from our right. And there he is. Oh, it's an oil tanker. Uh, so no board and search on this one. And looks like definitely flying the uh, flag there belonging to the British Empire. And so we'll make a lock on that one. It is the tanker. And so there's the war class. I don't think so. We've got a larger structure at the back. That's a coaster wrong way. Tanker, the T2. Well, no, the T2 looks like it's got three large masts on. This one's got two. Uh, so let's keep going. The old class, the two masts, the structure in the mid, and then the structure at the back with the pole. 
definitely that one got a little lip at the front as well yeah i'm happy with that okay recognize that now we're still trending towards this boat so let's just come to a full stop just for the purposes of getting a more accurate speed measurement sometimes not always but sometimes when you get solitary vessels like this um sometimes their speed is uh, way higher than the average 12 or 13 uh, so we'll see if that's the case today but for now let's get ready to start with the clock and there we go and come to a stop set and reckon speed this time 14 so a little higher than average but not by much um still a ways off course well currently looks like exactly on the 45 and let's have a little look at the distance we'll raise scope level it up with the waterline as best we can uh 2.8 and so for a target this size um i don't think we need to be that much closer i mean i think i'll just creep creep a little closer just to really ensure that we don't miss and with him about well he's still got like 45 degrees to go till he crosses our bow and so i want to get the torpedoes off somewhere between i'm thinking somewhere between 10 and 25 degrees and so i'll bring you back at that time all right little update on the situation the target is creeping towards our position as we hide beneath the sea there she is and if we jump again onto the periscope you can see she's almost approaching the ideal firing solution there so i want to update some of this information we'll up scope a little and make sure that these uh, torpedoes are ready so we'll give an assist on the guy that's working on those torpedoes and so the boat's going to be the same clearly speed the same course we're just going to verify that so we're well past the 45 degree point we're clearly not yet at the 90 or we wouldn't be able to see the front at all um so if we take a look aob uh, based off our previous calculations it's thinking 71 degrees i'm thinking that's perhaps a little high um i'm gonna knock it back by around five or ten so let's go to around 65 that at least at first glance feels a little more accurate and now let's update on the speed so once again waterline to the highest mast which is going to be right around there and so instead of it being 2.8 it's now 1.7 kilometers 20 degrees away from the bow and with that i'm happy to go for a shot uh, let's give tube four a uh, say electric one we'll go for a steam one and we'll go for a high speed shot and if it misses doubles back round to the left that's okay we'll reduce the distance slightly and with that loss loss and let's see if we can track this one going going through the sea uh, so we'll switch over to the map view so there's our sub there together with our course line and here's the torpedo leaving a nice trail now clearly this trail is going to be visible to anybody on the surface the problem is by the time you do notice it if you're in a ship that's this big i just question are you able to do anything about it now we will hear them ringing the bell if they ring the bell but for now the guy here aboard the oil class there busy sweeping the deck so i suspect not yet this guy having a look potentially having a smoke guy on the stopwatch reckons 30 seconds and there's the torpedo be nice if you could twist the camera around as well on the map view because i'd love to follow this one in but i don't think i can but that's a real nice shot and I don't think anything is going to cause this to miss now. Slightly aft of centre. Always the goal being middle of target. But that's now ringing and dinging. And thanks to it being fully laden with oil, that is going to go up. Like the 5th of November bonfire night. Good shot. secondary explosions continuing to take place 
but she is down. And we'll take a look and see if we've got any officers that we can pick up. All right. Flank speed. No time to waste. Up we go and we'll radio off that we've sunk yet another. Okay, full stop. Three lifeboats, all pretty heavily laden. It would seem that whenever there's officers, they always pick the least crowded lifeboat. Still moving too fast. All right, let's work our ways down. Three, two, one. Uh, sailors only in three. Lifeboat two. Sailors only as well. And lifeboat one. Sailors only. So once again, officers uh, electing to go down with the ship. Okay. Just before we head back, we were aware of another contact. So let's dunk back down. I just had a radio message from the SS Baroi. Can only assume that this is another ship out on the sea that's managed to uh, spot itself the uh, smokes, smokes from the you know the destruction there. That if they just if they spot you know smoke billowing up into the sky, they radio it off and report it. But for now, diving down, Schuster on the hydrofoam, and we'll see if we can find anybody. Well, a few seconds later, indeed he does, and not far away either. Let's get in a rough approximation on this guy. It's a single ship, around 50 kilometers, and I think we will go for that, and then a quick shot across the bay, uh, we'll be back. All right, so let's go northwest, surface the boat, plank speed, I'll bring you back. We've entered the area within max visual range where we thought we might see it. We haven't. Schuster's gone off to bed, so we're just going to dive down to periscope depth, get one of the officers that aren't so well trained with the hydrophone, but they should be able to at least hear something. And I'm hoping I can keep the engines running for this one. We'll get Kurt Hoffman onto it. See if he will be able to hear anything. So there we can see the maximum range that he can hear. Bearing in mind that we are going at high speed. I'll tell you what, to help him out, we'll just slow down to about half speed there. Less water running over the hydrophone stuff. He should be a little better able there to hear. Come on. Slow speed. We'll clear off some of these markings behind us. Again, the ship, last time we heard, was the ship was basically here. Now, he could have been heading in any direction. That's the problem. And at least for now, he's still having bother. So let's come to a full stop. I was hoping not to have to do this. But it... Oh, and there we go. And the ship also trending southwest. Okay. Thank you very much. And with that, full speed. Uh, we'll surface the boat. And now, I don't think there's going to be any question about it. We're going to run into it no time. Welcome back. Smoke spotted over the horizon and zooming in. That's all that we have so far. 10 degrees off the bow on the starboard side. So we'll continue on this course. A few moments later, we're a little closer now. And we can see, starting to see the ship there. It looks like one of the Empire Bell style of ships. Certainly not armed. Certainly by itself. And so there's going to be no reason to dive down on this one. We're going to... Uh, approach this guy from the top. Alarm's been rung due to the spotting and confirmation of an enemy ship, even though it is only a regular convoy merchant it's an enemy nonetheless and so here we are about to pull up alongside and we've just detected a new message and SSS SSS 46 22 north 9 12 west SS Baroy under attack confirm and so I can only assume that this unknown warship is going to be the Baroy, and they've already spotted us and radioed off that they are under attack. And so this is going to be a quick hit and run. We're well within the 
Um, operational range of enemy aircraft that are leaving from the southwestern UK that, of course, were responsible for sinking so many sh uh, of the uh, U-boats in the Bay of Biscay. Um, so we don't want to hang around here any longer than we need to. Of course, the uh, UK... ...having survived or been undergoing the Battle of Britain, having survived it... ...and since dominating the skies. And now... Just after quarter past three on the 24th of April 1941, here we are moving to cut them off. We'll see if we can board them and use a sapper to plant charges. Uh, if we can't, uh, we'll have some deck gun practice. All right, that's close enough. Let's come to a full stop. And it is indeed the SS Bayroy. And so they were right in assuming that we were going to attack them. And it looks like they're not going to stop, which is understandable. They are the enemy. Um, and so with that, I'll tell you what, Captain's turn to come topside, use the deck gun. And uh, we'll get Hoffman up topside as well. He can use the flat gun. Uh, we'll go slow speed. And we'll see if we can move along in parallel with this ship. While we wait for the officers to climb up and then climb down, getting onto their various positions. Get an assist for Hoffman and another one for Klaus. Two with Menzel on lookout. We don't want to get jumped by any air. All right. So, Hoffman. Target SS Baroy with your anti-aircraft guns. It's possible to uh, sink. In fact, we'll give him a hand. Firing high explosive rounds on the ship. And with that, I think as well, rudder amidships. Oh, slightly more left then. See if we can knock off some of these. I'll tell you what. Slow. And now we can have rudder amidships. There we go. Do the same to the front. And I think now we'll switch over to the deck gun to make this whole process a little quicker. Um, so here we are. Taking a look through the site. Not that we need it at this range. And... Oh, yeah. Also firing high explosive rounds into the boat. And then we can see starting to catch fire. Sea swell, uh, 
causing a bit of bother then. At least for now, the crew seems to have dealt with the fire. But it does appear that the ship is starting to sink a little bit. Continue to put rounds into it. A nice spread on the fire there now, and I think they're going to struggle with that. One more for good luck, and I suspect she is done. And with that, we'll leave it. If anything, we'll jump back onto the anti-air. Just to make absolutely sure that she is finished. But I suspect so. Yeah, there she goes. She is down. All right. And with that, there's going to be a few to pick up. So rudder starboard and we'll go half speed. And I'll bring you back. Once we see there, she's very heavily damaged. And it looks like it's going to be one of these shipwrecks where they just sort of hang out like this. And without our final push, she may not go down. And so I think what I'm going to do is jump aboard and uh, put a sapper on there. But for now... Captain Command Station, Hoffman. Yes, you stay on the anti-air. You never know uh, who could be around. And that's close enough. There we go. Full stop. All right, so let's have a little look. So we've got three interactions and lifeboat five. And with that, Captain, as well as the Chief Engineer, welcome aboard. And so with that, we've got six survivors in total. We can carry up to eight. And we've got the boat that's heavily listed in the SS Barroi. And so we're going to send a team over, uh, one of which I want to have engineer. Do we have... Both our engineers are too tired. The, the, the two engineers that have the sapper abilities are too tired. So we we'll scratch that. We're not going to send anybody over. Uh, instead, we're going to back off slow speed. And we'll use our anti-air gun to finish her off. I don't think there's any chance of that one staying afloat much longer now and so there we have it ladies and gentlemen it is uh, well worth pursuing that one Hoffman you can disappear do something else I don't know some map reading whatever you like and with that down she goes we get the message there Hullenbruch the hull's been broken in the literal translation. SS Barai sunk 1,800. Uh, we're going to get to, well, 1,800 amount of reputation from back at base. And with that, au revoir. Two days later, Port of La Rochelle, here we come, having traversed the Bay of Biscay. No further targets. 26th of April, 1941. Apparently a Saturday. Here we are back inside the safety of the block gates there. And Keru getting presented with their medals. Their wells on the way to the next one. German cross in gold for him. Horst Weber also on his way to the German cross. Uh, Karl Heinz Schuster, our radio guy, uh, crossing gold as well. Kurt Hoffman makes some progress towards Knight's Cross with Oak Leaves and Cross Swords. So that's a high uh, value decoration. And Michael Knurd as well on the way. And then last but not least, of course, Klaus, the captain, who's making his way towards the Knight's Cross with Oak Leaves, Cross Swords and Diamonds. And so about as high as a ward as it got. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we managed to sink the Empire Ability, the Empire Kingsman, the Empire Halley, the Empire Tudor, and then the Empire Grey, the Guinevere, the Marlow, 
the Defender, the Olna, the SS Baroy. And with that, we return to base. Tonnage sunk 53,000 tons. Uh, time at sea there, just shy of seven days, traveling 9,000 tons. And 68 kilometers. I hope you enjoyed that one, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope to see you again on next time we have a war patrol. But until then, from me, take care. Bye bye.